Margie McHugh. I'm the co-director of the Migration Policy Institute's National Center on Immigrant Integration Policy. And I'm here today to talk about the winners of our 2012 E Pluribus Unum Prizes Program. This year, the Prizes Program is awarding three $50,000 prizes for exceptional immigrant integration initiatives and one corporate leadership award for exceptional efforts by a corporation to promote immigrant integration. The award winners were selected from a pool of several hundred applicants that were received from across the U.S. Uh, a national advisory board helped us in making the selection of the prize winners, and the prize winners received their awards at the National Immigrant Integration Conference in September. MPI's National Center on Immigrant Integration Policy created the prizes program uh, back in 2008 with support from the J.M. Kaplan Fund. We and they wanted to raise up the incredibly important work that's happening all across the country to help immigrants and their children join the mainstream of U.S. society and also to build stronger relationships and stronger communities by bringing immigrants and the native born together. I'm pleased to introduce the Corporate Leadership Awardee from this year's E. Pluribus Unum Prizes Program, City Community Development. Our Corporate Leadership Award recognizes exceptional work on the part of a corporation to promote immigrant integration, and we certainly saw that in City's work. Not only the work that they've been doing for many years through their community development efforts to reduce disparities among different communities in terms of their access to financial services and products, uh, but also the very particular work that they've begun to do to promote citizenship. What City has done is create an experiment in a sense in the mid-Atlantic region where they brought together some of the top respected players in this set of issues uh, in order to figure out how to create a successful microloan program that could help immigrants afford the citizenship fee and also support a larger campaign called Citizenship Maryland trying to promote the benefits of citizenship. Key partners in the project in the mid-Atlantic include the National Council of La Raza, which has a long, uh, a long history and a deep skill set in the area of building the uh, financial assets of Latino immigrants, the Latino Economic Development Corporation, uh, which focuses on those issues in particular as well, and also Casa de Maryland. This is a first in the nation effort to create this sort of microloan program by a major player in the financial uh, industry like Citi, and so it really has brought up a lot of, t of attention uh, to the idea that major corporate entities uh, do have a role to play in, in integration and uh, what is more a, a badge or a symbol of integration than the attainment of citizenship. So it's incredibly significant that City has jumped in and embraced the issue of citizenship, that in such an intelligent way uh, they're trying to uh, build a program that can be scaled and that can be brought to other parts of the country and of course most importantly that they are helping to promote citizenship by making it more affordable. One of the reasons this program is so significant is because of the significance of citizenship. We know that citizenship is important because of the right to residential security, the right to vote, the right to travel, and the right to reunite with your family under the immigration laws. But what is only now coming into view uh, uh, through research that we've just completed here at the Migration Policy Institute is that there is an economic value to citizenship. When we compare citizens and non-citizens who are alike along all important human capital domains in terms of their education, in terms of their tenure in the United States, in terms of their English language proficiency, what we find is that there is at least a 5% premium for being a citizen. This is especially in times of recession. The United States' relatively high citizenship fees represent more of a barrier to citizenship than ever. Today, there are 8 million legal permanent residents who are eligible to naturalize but who haven't. So I would argue that cities' focus on fees makes all the sense in the world. But the economic reality, this is again one of the things that we learned in working with CASA, that legal permanent residents moving from there to full citizenship, uh, they can they increase their income. And, and when you think about what that means, not just that it's more dollars, but does it mean that
They can budget better, they can save better, and it isn't just the wage differential, it's that their children can pay in-state tuition. They can get a job that they might not have been able to get. So when you combine all those things, the wage differential is part of what I would say is, is the economic empowerment opportunity for someone to become a citizen. And that's what, I think that's what impressed a lot of us is that, is that we're changing somebody's life and the life of their family and the life for generations to come, hopefully. I mean, that's, that is incredibly powerful. It's incredibly powerful. In addition to the terrific work that the city has been testing and pioneering in Maryland, uh, that they're that they're planning to bring to other parts of the country. Uh, they also, on another track, have been working on some particular citizenship efforts in New York City with the public schools that uh, all of you who are watching should keep your eye on. Uh, just as we're announcing the award, they are also going to be going live with a campaign uh, around citizenship in schools, with the idea that since so many uh, since schools are one of the primary places where immigrant parents have the highest level of contact with government uh, in the, when they first are here in the U.S., and, and I guess maybe more sustained contact with a government entity, um, there's a thought uh, about putting more information and services in schools for parents to help them navigate the larger society. I think there can be different ways of, of going about this, different strategies. Um, I think what, what we hope to show is that the microloan works that you, and that you can scale it. Because we've got tens of thousands of people in Maryland, I mean, you know, forget New York, I mean, the, the, what they have, but I mean, we've got so many people that are on the edge. For all of its efforts to reduce disparities in access to financial services, and most especially for its more recent efforts to promote U.S. citizenship, both through the Citizenship Maryland campaign that it's been a key partner in, and also for the microloan program that it's been piloting, hoping to take nationwide uh, in order to help lawful permanent residents afford the fee for U.S. citizenship. We are simply delighted to be able to provide our 2012 Corporate Leadership Award to City Community Development. When you talk about transforming lives, this is the opportunity, and to me, that's I, it's hard for me to put into words what that feels like.